This is Father Al Starbach with Mount Calvary Catholic Church here to talk to you about Holy Week and Easter in our homes. I have some specific suggestions to share, but before I do so, I want to share a pastoral word that I received from Bishop Lopes just earlier this week. And he quoted from St. Athanasius from the Office of Readings. And St. Athanasius talks about Easter in such a way that he says that God gave up his son to death for our salvation, and from the same motive gives us this feast which is commemorated every year. Now, Bishop Lopes says he was struck by these words, commemorated every year, but also by the fact that God gives us this feast. This is a time, yes, where we honor God, but most of all, it is something given to us. But this year, it is veiled, which means that we need to approach this with a particular spirit of prayer and with intentionality. So what will that look like in our homes? Well, it's going to strengthen the domestic church. But of course, this is something, while there's graces for that, it's nothing that we would ask for. So in this context, I want to offer some words of encouragement. I think of how many leaders of our nation began as leaders at war. Someone like Dwight Eisenhower would not have asked for a war in which to hone his leadership skills. But it's through this context of adversity in which he ultimately became a great leader and ultimately the leader of our nation. And how about someone a little bit less well known? I came across the account of Peter Lemon in Vietnam. He was ultimately the winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor. And how did this happen? It was because he fought outnumbered 20 to 1. Now, he would not have asked for these odds, but it's through his heroism that he received this award. He actually tried to turn down this war. He didn't do this for honor. Uh, but ultimately, alongside his other career, he became a motivational speaker, using that experience that he gained from adversity to encourage other people. And so likewise, we have a warlike scenario, a time of adversity to celebrate Holy Week and Easter. But this is a time when we can strengthen the domestic church and then ultimately be able to strengthen others when we're in uh, in, so it's a peacetime as well when all this goes away. So what might this look like? Well, first of all, let's think of Palm Sunday this coming weekend. Uh, do you need palms to celebrate Palm Sunday? Think of the first celebrants in scripture. They grab whatever was available, whatever branches were available. And so you can as well. There's shrubbery outside your home you can use to praise the Lord. And Holy Week next week, we hope to live stream tenebrae services. And what you can do if you participate is turn down the lights in your own home. And the strepitus which happens afterwards, prepare your own loud noise, a dramatic end to that service. Good Friday, uh, go through the Stations of the Cross at home. Or how about Maundy Thursday before that, uh, family foot washing. But when it comes to Good Friday, I'll post some resources for it to make it easier for children, for those of you who have children in the home. And when it comes to the Easter Vigil, why not have a holy fire outside your home, safely of course, but then when you come inside, have the home dark just as it is in church. And when we throw on the lights of the Gloria, throw on your lights as well. So we're going to help, of course, by having beautiful services live streamed, as I referred to, and that will include, yes, servers, uh, as long as it's less than 10 people in the church, but Holy Week is going to happen in your home, and in this way, it can strengthen your domestic church greater than it was before, greater than it was if this hadn't happened. So again, we don't ask for these things, but we can make the most of it. Uh, when we have a service, you can put candles in the room, so as an extension of the candles of the altar. Um, all of these things are ways that you can elevate this, but will make your domestic church more sacred for times to come. And during the week, you know, when, the, when we have our time is not as structured, trying to work from home, structure with prayer. Uh, this is a way where you can make your commuting time that would otherwise go to commuting a time that makes you more holy, a time that creates better habits for the times that are going to come. In light of this, I'd like to share another word of encouragement now from today's Office of Readings. St. Augustine was writing about the Psalms when he said that, our Lord, we approach him in majesty at some times. He says, we gaze on the divinity of the Son of God, something supremely great and surpassing all the greatness of his creatures. And this is what it's like when we encounter our Lord in the church, through the sacraments, through the vestments and the pageantry. But then Augustine says, other times, 
we see in Scripture that our Lord is one sighing, praying, giving praise and thanks. This is in his humanity. This is where he meets us where we are, and this is where he will meet you in your own homes as you're sighing, praying, giving thanks, invoking his name. And in this way, yes, your domestic church, whether you're alone or whether you're with a family, it will become stronger. And through this, when all this is over, you will be stronger to further strengthen the world.